And I think you want to stay put. We've been talking about global issues, but we've been talking about them in a very domestic focus. Impact investment, SOCAP are not just domestically focused. This is a global movement. And for those of you who might remember, in 2013, when Prime Minister David Cameron announced the G8 Social Impact Investment Task Force, this felt like huge global news. And five years later, in 2018, we see that this task force has grown into a truly global movement. I got you. Amit Bhatia is the CEO of the Global Steering Group on Impact Investment. And he's going to take us on a whirlwind tour of the state of global impact investment. He has an amazing perspective to see what this looks like in countries around the world. Please welcome to the stage, Amit Bhatia. Thank you. In 1988, 30 years ago, the tech movement was very young. The world was busy, excited about the 20 kilogram cathode ray tube desktop, declaring the typewriter dead and announcing to the world that Fortran and Kabul will be the road to Nirvana. But the visionaries right here had something else on their mind. But if you had asked anyone outside of Silicon Valley to take a bet that someday half the humanity will have a 200 gram or less device in their hand with real-time data, real-time connectivity, they would have told you, stop smoking pot, go write science fiction. 30 years later, we know Apple and Microsoft, Amazon and Facebook, Intel and Cisco were all born in that movement. In 30 years, those newborns rule global capitalism. In 2018, right here, right now, Steve Jobs' words ring in my mind that you cannot connect dots looking forward. You can only connect those dots looking backward. So right here, right now, another phenomenon is taking place that of the impact movement. The spirit in this room is not very different from what I have experienced back in 80s and 90s in Silicon Valley startup town halls. You know something very few know. You know something very few believe. But I'm here to reassure you, you've got it right. The impact movement is much like the tech movement, showing the same growth trajectory. With $26 trillion in responsible, sustainable, and impact investing, this is not just a leap of faith. We're already connecting the dots. And this is happening because Rousseau's social contract written 250 years ago has expired. Ask the people I meet in the front line in a country like India who live in poverty. Hobbes' Leviathan, documented 350 years ago, has turned out heartless. Even Adam Smith's invisible hand, back from 1860s, can do with a little bit of guidance. We are well on our way to creating the impact economies of the future. We are turning capitalism on its head. And this capitalism 2.0 is going to be very different from capitalism 1.0. Don't get me wrong, capitalism 1.0 delivered a lot of good, unbelievable, unprecedented improvements in quality of life, health, transport, you know, the industrial revolution, tech revolution, which I just mentioned. But you'll all agree, it has ex exasperated poverty. It has increased inequity. It's devastated the planet. So I'm going to take next 10 minutes just to convince you that this movement is global. This movement is going to win. And 30 years from now, when the history will be written of the impact movement, you'll be able to tell the story just the way we tell the story of the tech movement. But before I launch into that, I do want to acknowledge Lindsay Smalling and SOCAP, which for this movement have been an incredible, clear, sharp, and pioneering voice. So give them a big hand.
So revolutions. There are three things about revolutions I got to tell you. One, all revolutions are simple and bold ideas that restore justice or balance. Think of it. Women should vote. All citizens are equal. Dictatorship is bad. Similarly, the impact narrative is a simple and bold idea that capital has a higher purpose. Capital must be used to deliver a social or environmental impact alongside financial returns. That impact can drive profitability and need not impair it. Second, all revolutions are decentralized and replicable. Think of this. At the beginning of the last century, Susan Anthony here in US and Emily Pankhurst on the other side of the Atlantic in UK fought for women's suffrage at the same time without having internet and tweeting to each other and asking what's your next move. Similarly, the impact movement has manifested in different ways, responsible investing, sustainable investing, impact investing. We have a common vocabulary, a common toolkit, and we are proving to each other across every continent that profit and purpose can coexist. Third, revolutions are inclusive and abiding. Think of all major movements. They engaged all citizens, irrespective of caste, color, creed, religion. Even the recent Arab Spring, still work in progress for many, spread to 20 plus countries. Likewise, our movement is inclusive of philanthropies on the left and capitalists on the right, of for profits and non profits, of private markets and public markets. You've got to agree that. At its core, the impact movement has characteristics that make successful revolutions. So let's launch, right, and take a little bit of a journey around the world from the eyes of the Global Steering Group for Impact Investing and tell you how this movement has taken root in our 21 plus countries, how our NAVs are making sure that in their countries, capitalism 2.0 will be ushered in soon. But I got to tell you a little story first. In Europe, in the medieval times, when they drew world maps, they would only mark the known world. On the unknown world, they would just write a big line, here be dragons. So let's go across the Sierra Nevada desert first to Mexico, where alongside Mayan and relics of Aztec, this February, I discovered 125 million fund of funds founded by Sonen Capital, based right here in San Francisco. Across the Amazon, Brazil government just created a national strategy for impact investment along with our National Advisory Board or NAB. You'll hear that word often. When I was there, I discovered the two, two largest deals in Brazil impact venture capital, both by LGT of $20 million each, which the Brazilians didn't know about, one in Dr. Consulta, one in General Waters. And I saw Vox Capital get its first exit at 26% IRR. Let's cross the Andes. I was in Chile down just last week, and our NAB there has former President Lagos. They are going to be hosting the 2019 Impact Summit, and they are about to launch their first two social impact bonds. In Argentina, where in 30 days you'll welcome the 20 G20 head of states, the government just launched a fund of funds. The stock exchange is writing regulation on ESG and making, going to make it mandatory for all corporations. They just launched their first SIP. In fact, the RISE Fund just made their first $20 million investment in Argentina in an education startup called Digital House. Let's cross the Atlantic. Portugal, vibrant with impact bonds. The national government just passed a law for a 55 million euros national social innovation fund. In France, President Macron has announced a social business act. Solidarity funds are already allowing pension funds to put 10% of their AUM in social stocks. Across the Rhine, Germany has two impact bonds. Up in the Nordics, Finland has been an innovator, innovator. Six impact bonds, the largest environmental bond, the first refugees bond. Come down to Marco Polo's Italy. Even there, the government is including impact investment in its budget. 
they just announced a 25 million euros social impact fund. And across the channel in UK, thanks to Sir Ronald Cohen, it's been an innovator and an institution builder. World's first wholesaler, big society capital, first social impact bond at Petersborough Prison, the Social Finance Global Network, the Life Chances Outcome Fund, totally funded by the government of UK. Let's continue along what we call the Silk Route to Israel. In Israel, there have been two impact bonds, including one on diabetes. There are four in the pipeline. And if you go, keep going down this route, you get to my home in India, where we get a billion dollar plus of impact capital annually, which touches 60 to 80 million poor and delivers 11% IRR in dollar terms. And those of you thinking, where is the scale? India alone is home to about a dozen impact enterprises over a billion dollar in revenue or market cap. Amul in dairy, Ramkin Viro in waste management, Jane Irrigation in agriculture, AU Financial in financial inclusion, Renew Power in solar energy. So don't tell me we can't get to scale because I come from a country where 300 million people are getting served you know, through impact movement. Let's go from 77 degrees east to 90 degrees east from Delhi to Dhaka. Bangladesh is a billion dollar market. And between 2017 and 2020, they are going to grow by 50%. Let's go down south to Australia, where our NAB members are putting their values into law and building a 300 million wholesaler with public funds matching private funds. Let's go another 70 degrees north from Sydney to Seoul. And in Korea, a mar the market just breached 500 million mark and our NAB there persuaded the government to put together a social impact fund of funds, $300 million. Across the Korean Strait in Japan, the market doubled between 2014 and 2017. And guess what? A NAB member's learning from the British experience convinced the government to unlock dormant accounts and unclaimed assets to build a four and a half billion wholesaler. That's the power of our movement. And as I cross the Pacific to come back where we sit today, I got to tell you this. 2015, US was a 50 billion market. When we recently got KPMG to do a market sizing study, they projected by 2020, US is going to be 100 billion, twice of what it was, and the largest impact market in the world. You're going to discuss enough about regulations, about opportunity zones and the Build Act passed recently. And all I know is this country, more than anyone else, is putting impact at the center of the agenda in both public and private debates. As I complete the world tour, I got to tell you this. We are adding, as GST, five countries to the movement every year. We are committed to widening and deepening this movement. And I want to let you know that as you travel around the world, be rest assured, what you have started is taking deep root. I also got to tell you this, that I have a, I have a deep personal reason for doing the work I do. I'm a son of a refugee family. My parents arrived back in 1947 when the undivided India was split after the British rule into India and Pakistan. They used to live on the Pakistan side. My father arrived in India as a seven-year-old boy at Amritsar. The, the refugee camps were in disarray. He worked as a porter for weeks before the family was relocated. Youngest of seven, he did not get to study much. But I can tell you this that he found time to learn how to type shorthand and became a lower division clerk. Though he did not study much or earn much, even that clerk had a vision. He knew how to disrupt the low income cycles and he had an intergenerational view. He put us, we lived very humbly, but he put us through schools, people from our economic strata could never dream of going. So I stand here today the son of a clerk living proof to the power of education, the power of impact.
And last fortnight at the GSG Summit in Delhi, we launched two billion dollar education outcome funds, one for Africa, Middle East, and one for India, which I personally mentored. So God will leave you with this. On this world map of impact, there are only opportunities across the world. Dragons only haunt maximization of profit without purpose. As intrepid questers like Ibn Battuta and Columbus and Vasco da Gama, we cannot seize our quest. We can build a world where our children hold up a map of a more equal and just planet. That vision is worth fighting for. That vision is worth sacrificing for. Thank you all and let's go build a world which we are all proud of and let's show capital how to find its highest purpose. Thank you.